The primary battle tanks, infantry combat cars, armored personnel vehicles, and different self-propelled or towed artillery systems were among the treasures of the Ukrainian armed forces and other military branches that expelled the Russian invaders from Ukraine. Today, a second meeting will be placed at the American military facility in Ramstein, Germany, to discuss defense aid for Ukraine amid its conflict with Russia. The conference started at 11 a.m. in Kiev. Attending the contact group conference are representatives from about 50 nations. It is held at the request of U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin. There are leaders of defense departments and high-ranking military officials from all around the world in attendance. At the conference, participants want to address the Ukraine situation and the security concerns facing U.S. friends and partners. Austin emphasized that the contact group must pledge to help the courageous Ukrainian defenders for an extended time. Minister of Defense of Ukraine Oleksiy Reznikov provided the first favorable news from the meeting. Details about more U.S. aid are also accessible. New military supplies at $675 million will include GMLRS ammunition for MRs, 105mm howitzers, artillery ammunition, harm air-to-surface anti-radiation missiles, Humvee military vehicles, and armored ambulances. In addition to small guns, ammo, and other equipment, the fresh assistance shipment will contain small anti-tank arms. Lloyd Austin emphasized that the world now acknowledges the clear benefits of collaborative efforts on the battlefield and that it is imperative to continue fighting the illegal, justifiable war of aggression undertaken in Russia. According to earlier reports, the head of the Pentagon indicated on July 20th that 16 American M142 Himars MLRS would shortly be supplied to the Ukrainian armed forces. The United States saw that Ukrainian forces had used the acquired weaponry. Over 40 nations were represented in the first meeting, which took place on April 26. President of the Ukrainian Defense Forces Volodymyr Zelensky claimed that Kharkiv had achieved some success. This was noted in a video speech he delivered the evening after the 196th full-scale invasion. Zelensky did not provide the names of communities that the armed forces of Ukraine freed from Russian invaders. This week we have received fantastic news from Kharkiv. You have probably all read about the operations of Ukrainian defenders. According to the president, every citizen should be proud of their warriors. He emphasized that it is not the appropriate moment to name the communities where the Ukrainian flag has been returned. The president said it was time to recognize the bravery and courage demonstrated by the 25th Airborne Brigade, the 92nd Separate Mechanical Brigade, and the 80th Air Assault Brigade during combat operations. The head of state thanked the 406th Separate Artillery Brigade and the 60th Separate Infantry Regiment for their exceptional strikes in the Southern Invasion Territories. The Su-25 assault aircraft of the Russian Federation Invading Forces Aviation was lost in Kharkiv. The hostile aircraft attempted to assault Ukrainian armed troops. In Kharkiv, Ukrainian troops also recovered small Russian RP-377 jammer equipment. These jammers are used to stop mine explosive device radio control channels. During their counteroffensive operations in Kharkiv, the Ukrainian troops seized the Russian invaders' BTR-4E armored personnel carrier. In March of 2022, the men of the 92nd Mechanized Brigade lost this BTR-4E. The General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine and the British Ministry of Defense examined the current losses incurred by the Russian military during the war. Ben Wallace, the British Minister of Defense, indicated that the Russian military had already lost almost 80,000 personnel. More than 25,000 of them were slaughtered. According to him, Russia continues to incur losses, influencing its future military efficiency. Since the beginning of this year, it has been reported that over 25.000 Russian servicemen have perished. Wallace told the House of Commons, if you add deceased casualties, captured soldiers, and the now reported tens of thousands of deserters, there are over 80,000 dead and wounded. It is crucial to note that the British Minister of Defense did not specify if the number includes combatants from the seized area and Russian security personnel. In addition, he accused Russian President Vladimir Putin of weaponizing energy and requested that his colleagues notify their citizens. 
the Minister of Defense of the United Kingdom stated, we must inform all of our constituents that the deeply troubling times we are experiencing are being caused by a totalitarian regime in Russia that is attempting to harm us all and test our values. The Ukrainian armed forces announced 50,150 invaders have been defeated since the beginning of the full-scale combat. According to primary sources, the Russian Ministry of Defense acknowledged losses on March 25th. According to the Russian Federation's Ministry of Defense, 1,351 Russian servicemen were killed in large-scale military actions. They suffered 3,825 injuries. Because they are reported to the Russian Ministry of Internal Affairs, the losses of OMON, OMEN, and the Russian Guard were also recorded individually. The Russian side continues to conceal information about casualties sustained by the Russian army throughout engagements from 2014 until February 24, 2022. The Russian military possesses a modernized T-72B3M tank for its battle against Ukraine. Observers on Twitter observed odd equipment in social media images. The photograph shows the T-72B3M tank from 2014. It was created for participation in tank biathlon contests by the Russian military. It resides in Beriatia. The T-72B3M tank was manufactured in false numbers for international contests and displays. These events were conducted in Russia, and only friendly country delegates attended. This uncommon Russian military vehicle is notable for its engine's 1,160 horsepower and automated gearbox. A new panoramic commander's site was installed on the tank. There was also a television and a laser rangefinder. The television was positioned between the gunners and commander's hatches at the back of the tower. The unusual riding UVZ was discovered on AT-72B3M belonging to the Russian occupying troops. This is the acronym for the principal Russian tank manufacturer, Ural Vagonzavod. The video depicts Russian invaders firing anti-tank guns, ATRK or RPG, or other weaponry against a fighting vehicle. The appearance of smoke in the tank's battle compartment verified the blaze. The damaged apparatus was coated in smoke. The explosion of the ammo occurred after a short period. The explosive detonation of the ammo destroyed the combat vehicle. During the counterattack in the Kherson region, the Ukrainian armed forces captured armored vehicles and weaponry from the invaders. Russian invaders did not capture several BMD-2 aircraft-borne infantry combat vehicles. A video of seized Russian equipment was circulated on social networks by people. The BMD-2 was insufficient. Additionally, Ukrainian troops acquired the BTRD airborne armored personnel carrier. This is the principal armored personnel carrier for the Russian Federation's airborne and mobile forces. The vehicle is constructed from BMD-1 aggregates and BMD-1 assemblies. However, it lacks a weaponized turret. The BTRD is armed with two 7.62mm PKT machine guns. The BTRD is distinguishable from the BMD-1 by its 483mm longer hull. Six rollers were added to the track support surface on each side. Permanent crew members of the BTRD include a driver, two machine gunners, and a pilot. The landing compartment can accommodate 10 troops. The tracked armored floating infantry battle vehicle BMD-2 may land by parachute, jet parachute, or other techniques. It is meant to carry men and enhance the mobility, protection, and weaponry of airborne and airmobile forces on the battlefield. The Ukrainian-Russian conflict, which has lately started to raise geographical tension and have many worldwide repercussions, has continued to bring new circumstances. Specifically, nations on the western flank criticized Russia's stance against Ukraine. The United Kingdom has signed a vital document affirming its support for Ukraine's independence. Thousands of Ukrainian troops, who are now on their route to the United Kingdom, have begun getting military training under the Interflex program, per a recent decision by the British General Staff. At this moment, the General Staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces thanked the United Kingdom for the training by producing a video demonstrating how the activities were done. 
While the Interflex movies were lauded by residents of many nations, it was reported that over 10,000 Ukrainian military men were taught using the videos. In addition, the film said that training were done by UK superiors and that the research would continue for some time. Now, millions of individuals anticipate the arrival of new videos within the framework of Interflex.